making its way out of the TARDIS and onto these tiny cardboard cards. Doctor Who is coming to a store near you. The Commander Precon, Timey Wimey, features the ever-popular 9th, 10th, and 11th Doctors. And while Doctor Who has all the time in all the universes, we certainly don't. So let's monkey around, starting with... What is the thing? Mastering time itself. You will play cards suspended with time counters like Star Whale and Judon Enforcers. Make cards otherwise non-suspendable suspended with your 10th and 11th Doctors. Give permanents like Rose Tyler and Wilfred Mott time counters that gain value as they accumulate more and more of them. Even cast spells for their suspend cost with the face of Bo. And finally, manipulate time itself by time traveling with all of history all at once and wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. You'll be able to surprise your opponents through means they never knew possible while making sure all your greatest threats enter the fray no sooner and no later than exactly when you need them. What the heck is time traveling? This is a brand new mechanic found in this deck on 9 total spells, including the face commander of the Precon, the 10th Doctor. This mechanic engages with every suspended card you own and every permanent with a time counter that you control. From each of those cards, you may add or remove a time counter, but only if you want to. On the rotating fireplace, you're going to want to keep stacking those counters, making it tap for more and more mana. On a suspended creature like Atraxi Warden, you may want to use the fireplace's other time-traveling ability to remove the creature's last time counter to exile a priority-tapped creature. Any other mechanics to look out for? Doctor's Companion is another one where if the other commander is a doctor, you may have two commanders. This functions just like the partner system, only more narrow in scope. The doctor always has a companion by his side. Why would it be any different in the command zone? The other key mechanics are suspend and vanishing. Suspended spells will enter exile with time counters. Vanishing spells will enter the battlefield with time counters. During the beginning of each of your upkeeps, one time counter is removed. When there are no more time counters, the suspended card will be cast from exile for no cost, and the vanishing card will leave the battlefield. Quick interlude, please consider subscribing to the channel to get this kind of commander content every week. Who are the commanders? The Tenth Doctor and Rose Tyler are the commanders you'll find right out of the box. And without any replacement cards, they may be the most powerful commander pair. The combination lets you play with all three colors in the deck, which naturally gives you access to more spells, but also more flavor for those looking to keep their deck Doctor Who-centric. Second, the attack trigger, allons on the Tenth Doctor is a general attack trigger, not tied to the Doctor himself swinging in. The less risk for my commanders, the better, I always say. The attack trigger is a roundabout drawn card and freely played spell, which is really good. It's worth noting that the spell isn't coming into the action straight away. It'll be exiled and suspended with three time counters. The only drawback is that you may end up exiling your lands and missing land drops, but we'll get to that later. The 7 mana Timey Wimey ability is a delectable cherry on top, letting you time travel 3 times. For those that haven't connected the dots, you can attack with a creature, suspend a spell with 3 time counters on it, and then Timey Wimey to cast that spell the very same turn. Rose Tyler is a straight-up beater, starting out at a measly 2-2, but getting plus 1 plus 1 for every time counter on her. It just so happens that when she attacks, she gets a time counter for every suspended card you own, and each other permanent you control with a time counter. In the first couple of turns, that payoff will be small, or even non-existent. But with a developed board, she could easily be getting 5 or more time counters every time she attacks. 
Just a couple turns of that and you're flirting with a one-shot. Who are the other commanders? There are actually too many legendary creatures, partners, doctors, and doctors' companions to go through in this single video. So I'm going to highlight the two that I think will make for some fun gameplay and interesting brews. The Ninth Doctor is an Upkeep Matters commander, where whenever he untaps during the untap step, you get an additional upkeep. In the pre-con, this is a slight double-edged sword, because it's great to take two time counters off of a suspended spell with the 11th Doctor's I am talking ability. But the removal spell crack in time getting two time counters removed feels bad, man. So you'll probably have to do some adjusting by adding something like followed footsteps, now creating two token copies of the enchanted creature or Tamiyo's journal to create two clue tokens for an impressive rate of two tutored cards in three turns. The War Doctor collects time counters when one or more cards phase out and when one or more cards are exiled. Not just your cards, every player's cards. The payoff is the War Doctor dealing damage to any target equal to the number of time counters on him when he attacks. You can slowly build these time counters up by suspending spells like Inspiring Refrain, so long as you have a blue Doctor's companion. But the real juice is utilizing Cascade. If you manage to Cascade a spell with the lowest mana value found in your deck, you'll cycle through your entire library one by one, each card giving the War Doctor a time counter, until you go through your whole library and shuffle it up. The 11th Doctor suspending a soul ring from your hand and it being cast the next turn from exile with Wild Magic Sorcerer on the battlefield would give the War Doctor more than enough time counters to one-shot an opponent when he attacks. Toss in Aggravated Assault and take care of the whole table. What is the best new card? There is a clear best new card and I don't find it particularly close. Everybody Lives is one and a white, giving all creatures hexproof and indestructible, players hexproof, not letting players lose life, and not letting players lose or win the game until the end of the turn. While it isn't as strong of protection for you as Teferi's protection, because you remain subject to a Meat Hook Massacre or Sunfall, it also costs one less mana. Making it better in some cases is that no players can win condition. Thassa's Oracle's Enter the Battlefield ability is a classic win condition, and everybody lives in response to that creature being cast, at the very least will stop them from winning that turn, and at the very best make them lose the next time they draw a card if they decided to mill their whole library. What is my favorite new card? Not everything in Commander is about power, but this one certainly packs a punch. The four red and a white dinosaurs on a spaceship. This is a 7-7 Vigilant Trampling Dinosaur that gives all other dinosaurs plus one plus one Vigilance and Trampling. This creature has a super unique suspendability that works great in Timey Wimey, but also with the Naya Velociraptor precon coming out with the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. All that to say, this creature is going to see plenty of play in the upcoming months. If you choose to suspend this creature, it gets exiled with four time counters, and whenever a time counter is removed, a 2-2 flying and hasted dinosaur is created. Without any time traveling or other shenanigans, when this creature finally enters the battlefield, you're looking at four 3-3 three, three Vigilant Flying Dinos with this big body to boot. Okay, what else is in here? A couple of the biggest reprints in this deck are Farewell and Wedding Ring. Farewell is a selective mass exiling spell, letting you choose one or more of creatures, artifacts, enchantments, and graveyards. This is a truly nasty spell that can shut down your opponent's entire game plan while leaving yours completely intact. 
Wedding Ring creates a copy of itself on a target opponent's battlefield when it enters the battlefield, and lets you, during their turn, draw a card when they do, and gain life when they do. Just remember, your target opponent's copy has the same text, so as you draw cards and gain life during your turn, your target opponent will too. Other than those, the land base has some tasty reprints, including Fiery Islet, Sunbaked Canyon, and Stormcarved Coast. Let's talk about upgrades. This is heavily dependent on what doctor you want as your commander. For this video, I'm going to stick with just the 10th doctor. But please, let me know in the comments if you want to see a deck tech or otherwise deeper dive into another commander option from Timey Wimey. For the 10th Doctor, and going back to the point about not missing your land drops through the Allonsi attack trigger, Reality Chip is going to give you insight into what is on top of your library, and when it is attached to a creature, let you cast spells or play lands from the top of your library. More so than just hitting your land drops, making sure the top card is something you want to suspend with the attack trigger is also super valuable. Because sometimes a spell like Gallifrey Falls No More will be on top of your library, and while you could attack, having that information and holding back so you can draw that card into your hand will oftentimes be far more helpful than swinging with Reckless Abandon. Towards that end, other library manipulation spells like the classics Ponder, Brainstorm, and Sensei's Divining Top will also help make that possible. Thassa, God of the Sea, is a creature, sometimes, that will be impactful in multiple ways. Scrying one on each of your upkeeps will make sure you are drawing what you need to draw, but the one in the blue activatable ability is also sneaky good here. You will find yourself without any good attacks in a game of Commander. That's just how it goes. This god has a cheap way to make sure you can get that attack trigger off, to get your value by making a target creature unblockable. If you also happen to control a massively buffed up Rose Tyler, making her unblockable could also mean lights out for an opponent. The Lost and the Damned is a fun suspend cast payoff by creating 3-3 three, three spawn creature tokens whenever one of your suspended spells is cast after its last time counter is removed. If you do end up having the reality chip in your pile, you can cash in on those land ETB triggers as well. Ancestral Vision is Ancestral Recall's Lil Bro, but is still a fantastic card in this deck to play at any point of the game, letting you eventually draw three cards for a single blue mana. I've come to realize I've been more or less spamming blue cards here, so I'm going to show a little love to the other colors, starting with Chronomantic Escape. This spell can be played with Suspend for 2 into white, and does not let you be attacked with creatures until your next turn when it's cast. The best part is that it goes right back into exile with 3 time counters on it for you to cast later on. The ability of this deck to manipulate time counters through time traveling abilities and a spell like Clock Spinning or possible creature addition, Joira's Time Bug, could put you in a position to never get attacked again for the rest of the game, so long as the loop remains uninterrupted. Last addition is the red counterpart to another spell in the deck, Rousing Refrain. This spell adds a red mana for each card in a target opponent's hand when it's cast, and just like Chronomantic Escape and Inspiring Refrain, it will return to exile with three time counters on it after the spell resolves. If an opponent has seven or more cards in hand and you have the tenth doctor on the battlefield, you're looking at infinite red mana, infinite storm count, and infinite magecraft triggers through the time-traveling, timey-wimey ability. Throw in a payoff like Comet Storm and you've comboed your way to victory. I guess that means we gotta remove stuff. Yes, that is the case, but fortunately the first couple of cuts are pretty straightforward. 
The minor clue token sub-theme is cute because the doctor is always solving problems and whatnot, but it's nothing more than a distraction from the two other things this deck is trying to do, which is time counter manipulation and Rose Tyler beatdown. So Astrid Path and Martha Jones, you are the weakest links. Sacrificing as well is misplaced here, so as adorable as they are, Adipose Offering gets the boot, as does the RMS Titanic. The face of Bo seems like a unique commander build, but it's doing the opposite of what we want, by putting those suspend cards right on the battlefield. Everything Comes to Dust is a great card, don't get me wrong but thrives in a predominantly white tribal deck where you can convoke out some of the most one-sided board wipes possible. And besides, there's plenty of other removal in this deck. Idris, Soul of the TARDIS, can go nuts with big artifacts like Portal to Phyrexia, but the direction this deck is taking doesn't need her special set of skills. The Pandorica is cool because it gives you the flexibility to remove different targets as scarier things enter the battlefield, but it's 5 mana for one piece removed on the first go around, and only temporarily, which is not what you want to see. I need 3 more to match the addition section, so I'm going with the 11th hour, the day of the doctor, and Rory Williams. You can't hide that clue token from me Rory. Get out of here you scamp. There we have it, everything you need to know about Timey Wimey. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll catch you next week for more Monkeying Around.